Hello, and welcome to this Onc Live News Network presentation. We're going to spend the next 45 minutes on recent advances in frontline therapy for advanced liver cancer. I'm your host, Dr. Richard Finn from UCLA. Today, I'm joined by three of my colleagues who are renowned experts at the treatment of liver cancer. Dr. Richard Kim from the Moth Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Dr. Riyad Salem from Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine in Chicago, Illinois and Dr. Amit Singhal from UP Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. Let's get started. There's certainly been a lot of interesting data in the liver cancer space over the past few years, and especially even just in the past few weeks. Amit, liver cancer is a very complicated disease. And before we get into all the recent data, as a hepatologist, can you give us some background about liver cancer? Yeah, so Rich, as you know, um, HCC is very common, particularly when you consider this as a global problem. So it's the fourth leading cause of cancer-related death worldwide. Um, and one of the interesting things about HCC is that it typically happens in the setting of chronic liver disease. And over 90% of these occur in the setting of cirrhosis. And I think that this sets up a couple singularities when you're treating this disease. The first is that given the differential um, blood supply to the tumor in the setting of a cirrhotic liver, we're actually able to diagnose this um, oftentimes by imaging alone. So in that clinical context of having someone with cirrhosis or chronic hepatitis B, in the setting of having a lesion that has arterial enhancement and delayed washout, you can actually call that HCC with about 95 to 97% certainty, thereby pre precluding the need to do actually a biopsy for diagnosis. The second thing is that when we consider treatment options, we can't just consider how big the tumor is or how much tumor burden there is, but you also have to consider the background liver dysfunction. And so it's important that we work as a multidisciplinary team, including hepatologists, interventional radiologists, medical oncologists, and really consider the broader clinical context of all of these factors when we're thinking about treatment options. So those are some very interesting points. Uh, one, we don't need a biopsy to make a diagnosis that's unusual for most cancers we treat. And, and when we talk about imaging, we're talking about a triple phase or dynamic CT scan or MRI. Is there a role for PET in liver cancer? Yeah, you know, so PET scan, I think, as you're implying, is used for many cancers in terms of staging. But for HCC, we actually find that HCC is not very FDG avid. And so the sensitivity of PET um, for HCC is actually low. Um, and so it's not built into the routine um, staging protocol for HCC lesions. So you mentioned the word staging, right? And and Riyadh, I'm going to bring you into the conversation here as well, because as an interventional radiologist, you play a and a diagnostic radiologist, you play a pivotal role in in staging. So Amit, uh, we don't only consider the radiographic staging or what I call anatomic staging, but also physiologic staging. That's where the Barcelona criteria comes in, BCLC. Can you give us a brief overview of that? Yeah, so the Barcelona Clinic Liver Cancer Staging System, or the BCLC, incorporates three different factors. It incorporates the tumor burden, the degree of liver dysfunction, and then the patient performance status, or the ECOG performance status. And based on these three factors, we're able to stage people into different stages, ranging from zero, which is very early stage, to A, early stage, B, intermediate stage, C, advanced stage, and then D, which is terminal stage. And one of the unique things about the BCLC is that it actually gives you treatment recommendations. It's associated with the treatment allocation system as a starting point with curative therapies, um, traditionally reserved for those patients at the earliest stages, local regional therapies, such as chemoembolization or radioembolization, largely um, delivered to patients in the intermediate stage, and then um, systemic therapies, historically largely given to patients in the advanced stage. So this is actually a curable disease when found early and patients are triaged to resection or even liver transplant, but most patients aren't gonna be candidates for that. 